Welcome to the video. Uh, in this one, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use Edge TX Companion to back up your Edge TX based uh, radio transmitter. Now, the reason I'm going to be backing up is I need to update the firmware on it. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so I'd like to have a, a functioning copy of it in case something goes wrong when I'm doing the firmware update. Now, typically I keep an update, uh, sorry, not an update, but a backup. Um, just in case something goes wrong with my radio, maybe the SD card fails or something like that. If I keep a backup, then it's very, very simple for me to restore everything that I need on my radio and get it up and running again. And so those are the two main reasons to, to keep a backup. Uh, now to do this, of course, you're going to need the radio that you want to back up. That's a good idea to make sure that it is fully charged before you start. Um, you're going to need the proper USB cable for it and um, computer, internet connection, a little bit of patience to, to do the, the steps of downloading and installing the software, which is not hard at all. Um, and then you'll get into it and get it finished. All right. So how are we going to do it? Well, first of all, I'll explain it and then we'll actually walk through the steps together. So first we'll go to the website, download the latest release of Edge TX Companion, which will help us with this then we're going to need to connect our radio transmitter to the computer so we can use Edge TX to, to read the information. Then we'll simply use that piece of software to read the settings that are on the radio and save them, and then read the firmware that's on the radio and save it as well. That's all it, that's all it takes, then you're done. Simple, okay? Now, the reverse of that would be true too. You'll be able to just take that same file that we've saved and using Edge TX Companion, write it back to the radio if you ever need to. And that would be the same for the firmware. So it's a very simple process, both to keep a backup and then to restore a backup if you need to. So having said all of that, let's jump in here and actually go through the steps directly. Okay. So we're actually just going to start by heading off to the Edge TX website which incidentally, I'm already here. If you just were to go there, here it is, right? And we're going to get Edge TX. And you can see about halfway down the page, Edge TX Companion, okay? And you can see that there's a version for Linux, for Mac OS, and Windows 32 and 64 bit. Now, I'm running on a Windows machine, so I'm just going to choose that one. The different versions are all very, very similar with how they look and how they operate and even how they install. So this should give you a pretty good um, go regardless of what kind of machine you're on. All right, this is just, there we are. So what we can see here now is it's downloaded and it's a zip file. So I'm just going to extract it out and find the installer. So the Ed Companion Windows 2.8 EXE, that's the software here that will actually install Edge TX Companion. So we just launch it, go through the steps of installing it. Agree to that, take the Companion. You can install it however you like in whichever part of your computer system that you like to install it. And it will go through the process take a moment to do depending on your own computer and you'll be done. You click next and it gives you the option to right away run Edge TX. So let's just do that. And as it launches, <clears throat> you'll see that it's actually a fairly straightforward, fairly simple piece of software. Um, where we're going to be focusing once we get going here is on this left column here because that will let us read and write settings to and from the radio. Now before we get into that let's take a look at how we connect the radio here. So I'm just going to pop over to this other version or other window sorry we'll turn on the radio first and then having done that we will connect the USB cable and when we do that, we'll see that we're presented with this option here of joystick or storage or serial VCP. We want storage. 
and you should hear it connect and that shows us that the actual radio is now connected as a USB device. It's thought by the computer to be a hard drive. So what we can do now is we can come over here to this column and we can see that the second button down here says read models from the radio, which is what we will do. And you can see right away it pulled all of the information right off the radio. Now what I want to do is save that. So along the top here, there's the button that says save. And I'd like to give it a decent name, so I'm just going to call it this March 2023. Uh, version is 2.71 and it's the settings. And it's the backup, so I will do that. I'll just replace the one that's there, which is fine. And then I'm going to, that's the settings. Settings are saved, we're done, they're backed up. Come down a little further on the left side. Not write firmware, but we want read firmware from the radio. I just simply click on that and it presents us right away with uh, a saving window. And I will just give it again that same very clear name, March 2023, version 2.71. And this is the firmware backup. Click save on that. And it will just run through the process of saving it. And that is it. Your firmware and your settings are now backed up, saved safe in a place on your computer where you can bring them back in and put them onto your radio if you ever need to. Now, for me, that was the first step in now going through the next step of updating my radio, but that is a process for another video. So if you're interested in learning actually how to do the process of flashing and installing the, uh, the updated firmware onto the radio, hang out and come along uh, and watch the next video because uh, that will be showing you how exactly to do that. So for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and uh, look forward to seeing you again in another video. Until then, take care.